Hello, Lemonster Heights. It's your state representative, Natalie Higgins, here for the March episode of Representing Lemonster. And I am thrilled to be joined with one of my newest colleagues, Rep. Meg Kilcoyne. Uh, and Rep. Kilcoyne, could you tell us a little bit about your district and uh, what made you decide to run for office? Yeah, thanks for having me, Rep. Higgins. Uh, very excited to be here. So for those watching in Lemonster, I'm just south of you. I represent the 12th Worcester District. So that includes the towns of Clinton, Berlin, Boylston, Lancaster, Northborough, and Sterling. So Sterling, I think, actually borders Lem Sterling does border Lemonster, mm -hmm. although not my particular district. So I'm uh, really excited to be here. Um, you know, it's uh, always happy to join uh, my fellow North Central delegation um, on talking about important issues and, and I'm excited to have this conversation today. So um, for those that don't know me, uh, I recently uh, was sworn into the House of Representatives. Um, I previously had served as the legislative director for my predecessor, Rep. Harold Naughton, who had served um, his district for 26 years. Uh, I had worked for him for 10 years. So you know, in that capacity, I, I started working for him in my early 20s. I, I knew I was interested in government and politics, but I hadn't really had a chance to get to really work on on state issues. You know, I had always looked at politics as a much more abstract, broader issue, especially, you know, more things concerning, you know, the president and the mm -hmm. Supreme Court. And um, I also, you know, graduated college with a history major. So I, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. Um, but I knew that I this was an area that I think thought I was interested in. So um, I started, you know, interning and then I got hired um, as kind of a, you know, in entry level position in the office and I worked my way up to legislative director and one of the things I, I learned over the years is just how big of an impact that you can have in this job. Um, you know, I, I, I would work on budget issues, for example, and I learned how just changing one word or one number on a light item can make such a significant difference for for countless families in the Commonwealth, not just in my district, but you know all over the state. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I really began to you know really love the work I did and really become passionate about it. And and I had the um, the fortune too to get experience to work on issues that were both important to my district. So I worked on a lot of local stuff, a lot of local bills. Um, but I also got to work on, on statewide policy. So I um, also was really uh, in charge of a lot of the committee work we did. My, my predecessor, Representative Naughton, was also chair of public safety and homeland security. So in that capacity, I got to research a lot of mm -hmm. really interesting subject matters. I got to be a part of helping craft a variety of legislation. I got to work with a lot of different representatives and really understand how collaborative this work is too. Um, you know, we are the two of us are, are two members of a body that's 160 in the House mm -hmm. and, and 40 in the Senate. And, um, you know, it's at the end of the day, we all have to sign off on one, you know, when we sign a bill, we all have to vote on it, you know, not on, this, on the same way, but mm -hmm. it's, um, we all have to work together to get things done. And mm -hmm. so for me, it's um, when, when the opportunity arose, when Representative Naughton decided he didn't want to seek reelection, um, I, I, you know, with his encouragement, uh, decided to run myself. Um, it, it wasn't really in my my five year plan exactly, but mm -hmm. it was. This is when this is when the moment occurred, and and I think for me, what really made me feel passionate about about taking on you know running a campaign for state representative is well, you know, I hadn't actually held elected office before, but I knew that I had the experience and the skills to be able to effectively navigate not just, you know, figuring out how to get resources for our communities, but also navigate this, this, this world in this pandemic. Um, you know, the way we do business for the last year has been really different than what we're all used to. So I was, I was able to bring, I think, a level of experience that has, that so far has actually served me well. And I, I, I think, think it a lot absolutely of, has. <laughs> yeah. And I think that it resonated with a lot of people in the district too, that, you know, people that knew me and, and, Kind of understood that this is um, a, a very unique time, and and I think I was able to bring a level of um, assurance to people that you know, I don't know when the pandemic is going to be over. I don't know when back to normal is going to be, but I at least you know I'm not going to be totally lost when I get in there. I, I I know how to help people get you know access to services they need. I know how to to write a bill, to file a bill. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it was uh, it it was really rewarding experience. It was a very scary experience, but I'm just very grateful that you know people were open to supporting 
to, to hearing me out on, on what I had to offer and, and that I had the support of, you know, my predecessor and, and my family and supporters. And it was, it was quite a journey. And, and now we're sitting here, uh, you know, God, almost 11 months to the day I actually announced and, and, um, you know, it's been, it's been a very exciting time and, um, you know, it's been a huge honor, even this la in the last, what, two, three months that the session has started. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think that's kind of a brief synopsis of, of how I got <laughs> where I am now or how I got here. So, well, I'm super thankful that the 12th Worcester District voters sent you to the legislature because you are already proving to be an awesome partner for, for North Central Mass. And we talk about it a lot and we talk a lot about this on the show, how important it is for us to work together. You mentioned mm -hmm. it, we're one of 160. And in Central Mass and in North Central, we've got to work together because the Boston delegation just dwarfs us because of population. Yeah. Uh, we really need to speak with a unified voice. And it's been really great to have such strong delegation members. I also think our delegation is, is kind of anchoring down the average age of the legislature. Um, I realized on a call the other day that we're all millennials. Uh, so so that's also nice just to, ha to have folks with some shared life experiences, age perspectives, um, uh, really talking about what could the future for our communities look like and how do we invest in that and plan for that? Yeah. No, I think that's such a great point too, in, in both ways. I mean, I think that um, Boston delegation has been a great example. Yeah, I think there's what, like, is there 16? I'm not quite sure on the actual number, but I think there's 16 members mm -hmm. that really have set the tone for how to effectively work cohesively to advocate for regional needs. And I know that, um, you know, I always admired as a staffer, the work that the delegation in North Central was trying to do to bring that same level of cohesiveness to our region. And so for me, you know, that was always something that I was really excited to, to if, you know, becoming a state rep to, to be a part of. Um, and I think that one thing that in terms of the, I guess the youth of the North Central Caucus, um, I heard a few people that would say, you know, well, well, what what's going to happen? Because you know we had some um, some veterans that did leave. Mm. You know, Representative Hay out in Fitchburg mm -hmm. um, served for I think four years, two terms, um, mm -hmm. and then obviously my predecessor Rep. Naughton was in office for twenty six years. So, mm -hmm. you know, people would say, you know, they're all so young. Uh, what's going to happen? You know, what is there going to be a void? And and really, there, I don't. I shouldn't say there isn't going to be a void. We will miss mm -hmm. you know our former mm -hmm. colleagues that have left. Yeah. But what I think is so special about where we're at now is is while we do have sort of this uniqueness of all being millennials of bringing that shared experience to our policy making it, it's not for lack of experience i mm -hmm. mean you yourself is serve, have served i think for three this is your third term correct mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and i think representative zlotnick is on his um fifth fifth term sixth? yeah sixth, <laughs> fifth or sixth. He's, fifth been, or like, sixth. he's been in for a while but he's the so youngest think, and also the dean of our caucus <laughs> Yeah, so that's such a good example of yeah. while we are, you know, lowering that average age, I think mm -hmm. we, you know, I'm grateful to be in a delegation that, you know, has people like yourselves and others that that have been around for a while that can really help myself and, and some of our other freshmen in the delegation, mm -hmm. um, you know, have somebody to reach out to, not just on, you know, regional stuff, but on, you know, oh, what's, yeah. what's the deal with this? What's going on here? So it's, it's an exciting place to be. And I'm so excited to, um, you know, work with all of all of the members of the delegation to, to bring that, mm -hmm. um, that that show of force, I guess, to Beacon Hill in Boston. And so you had to campaign during COVID. <laughs> you had to come in during COVID. What, I guess, two questions. What is it? How is it different being the elected official versus the staffer, just like generally, but I'm sure COVID adds a whole other layer into, into how you, you've had yeah. to transition those roles. And it was really interesting for me too, because after I won my, you know, I still had to work as a, as a staffer mm -hmm. for two months or so. Um, you know, we, the work didn't end right. after the election and, and representative Naughton still had two terms to go. And this wasn't a normal year either. Um, typically as, as for those that don't know the legislative cycle usually ends in july and mm -hmm. due to covid you know you guys were taking but you literally were taking votes, votes until, until four, four, in <laughs> four in the morning on yeah, the last day yeah. of session into the new session almost mm -hmm. so it was certainly a unique time and i i remember the night before swearing in um i was feeling a little strange in that like i didn't have time to really think about mm -hmm the transition. I, I, at one point I was watching session and I was like, I have to shut this off. Cause I, I have to, I have to be the rep tomorrow and I mm -hmm. can't be up till four. 
Um, I, and so Revnon had to handle that those last few hours on his own. Um, but I, so I was driving into Boston and it was so surreal. And I remember walking in the halls of the state house and I was with some of my new colleagues and, and they were getting hit with that feeling, you know, wh where they were in the state house in the building. Some of them were in the building for the very first time in their lives. Yeah. But for me, I had walked these halls for 10 years. I, this was, mm -hmm. this was like, you know, I, I knew this place. This is, this is what I've always, this is what I've worked in. Like this was, it, it didn't feel that way to me until sure. the moment I walked in the chamber in the House of Representatives. And I remember this moment of the court officer handing me that pin, the, the, the House mm -hmm. of Representative pins. He said, hello, Representative, welcome. And I looked up and I saw my name on the wall. And I, uh, I, I that's when it really hit me that I was the rep now, that I wasn't in that building as a staffer on behalf of somebody else. I wasn't, you know, I was walking around and I had to kind of like as a staffer, I guess you you, you always want to show a level of respect and deference to elected officials. And and suddenly I was able to call people that I'd always called, oh, Mr. Chair, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. Rep, I, I could call them by their names. And and I kind of was overwhelmed with emotion at that moment because it, it all the work that had gone into it for months mm -hmm. and, and a year came down to that moment. And and just really, truly feeling like it was the start of a new of a new era that like I I wasn't going to have to ask for somebody's permission before, you know, doing taking action on some sort of legislation or mm -hmm. or, um, you know, vetting it or, or not signing my name to it. It was my name now. Like I, I was the one making the decisions. And that was that was a really, um, I think, important and meaningful moment for me. And I think for my colleagues as well. So I, I was very grateful that despite the pandemic, the speaker figured out a way to allow us to have that moment mm -hmm. in the chamber that we didn't do it via Zoom. Um, I think if it had gone via Zoom and, and that would have, I mean, if the safety called for it, that would have been, you know, we would have had to do it that way, but it would have, I think, created a little bit of a strange feeling where you're sort of in your own little world mm -hmm. and, and you're like, oh, I guess I'm the rep now. So that I think is when it really was emotionally like hit me that I was the rep. And, sure. and then, um, again, like it was almost a weird, uh, such a strange day. Cause that actually was the same day as the capital tax as well. So, you know, I didn't even have, we didn't have time to really even kind of think about what it is it meant for us because mm -hmm. our democracy was literally under attack. Mm -hmm. And then the next day, you know, we, I was really grateful that I, I actually, my aide, my legislative aide is somebody I worked with on representative not in staff. And, and he had a lot of experience doing constituent work. So we, we kind of were dealing with this, you know, national crisis and, and we were still in our mm -hmm. COVID crisis where we, you know, are dealing with a lot of unemployment cases, trying to help people navigate that. And we were able to kind of transition a lot of existing cases into our own. Mm -hmm. And it was sort of, you know, you were just on the ground. Literally, we were we were having to hit the ground running where it's, you know, you don't it was we had the ceremonial moment, but the work literally started, you know, hours after. And um, it's been uh it's been a little bit of, I think, a sprint ever since, but there was some, uh, you know, some, the, the, there was some deadlines that were pushed back that did help, I think a little bit, you know, give us more of a chance to kind of breathe and, and yeah. let us get used to it. I mean, the filing deadline and co-sponsorship mm -hmm. deadlines have changed. So I think that's really been, um, really, uh, beneficial in helping us both kind of get used to things and having more time mm -hmm. to really um, look at different, look at our own legislation and then look at um, legislation we want to work on as well. Yeah, I think we've talked about it in the past, but typically you have kind of a week or two to file your bills at the beginning right. of session. Um, but honestly, less for us as electeds and more for the yeah. for the House Council and, and the clerk staff, they, they had to still wrap up the last session which was going until 4.30 in the morning. Yep. Uh, so so they needed some extra time. So that bought us some more time to be able to work on our legislation, better legislation. We got a whole extra month. Um, and and co-sponsorships typically after we file our bills, we have two weeks to, to kind of rush through co-sponsorships. 6,400 bills were filed. Um, and that's a really tough task, uh, especially for new reps to kind of sift through all of that legislation and make that judgment call. Like, does this do I put my name on this? Um, and so that has been extended until mid February or when bills get reported out of committee, at which yeah. point like the bill's moving and that's a great thing. Um, and so for, for constituents who are still waiting for either of us to respond to your bill co-sponsorship request, mm -hmm. we're working through them. 
yes, as quickly yes, as that possible. Is- but I will say I have a few hundred emails sitting in a folder being like, I need to, to go through these and vet these Same. just because unemployment emails, health insurance, SNAP benefits, food stamps, like all vaccination access, all of these other emails that, that honestly are just more urgent without that pressing mm-hmm timeline of right. post-sponsorship um, and our we haven't started our committee work uh, bills aren't being heard yet so that is buying us a little more time to start really sorting through those thousands and thousands of bills yeah um, and it, it's it helps to and I'm in the same boat where you know <laughs> those that are watching constituents we have your emails we have a little chart mm-hmm. we're going through them as quickly as we can but um it's important to, for me to, to to try to especially as a freshman legislator take time to read through mm-hmm. especially bills and policies I'm not familiar with um right just to make sure you know you always want to make sure you're signing your name to something that you understand and, and you support and are able to you know speak to so it, having this extra time is really helpful with that because it's certainly when you have a week sometimes you just need the you're trying to sift through so many requests that i'm really just grateful to have a little bit more breathing room when it comes to this process so and so you spent the last decade really digging into public safety bills mm-hmm. which are intense and many really high profile bills, but you're assigned to a number of committees now yes. as, as a house member. So tell me a little bit about the bills, uh, the committees that you're on and, and what you're excited about working on. Yeah. So um, I'm very excited. Um, I was assigned to five committees. Um, public safety was not one of them, um, which is for me, a, a, I think going to be a great opportunity to learn about mm-hmm. different policy areas that I wasn't really too involved with. As you said, as it was 10 years on the public safety committee. So I was really, you know, in that world and in that, mm-hmm. in that time frame. So uh, for, I was assigned to two house committees. Um, so house committees are just made up of members of the house of representatives. Um, one was um, a house building and security and operations. Um, with so Rep Zlotnick. With, yeah. yes, Vice <laughs> Chairman a- Rep Zlotnick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we haven't really started the work on that committee yet, but I think a part of it's going to be, you know, like we referenced before, in light of the capital attacks, I think that the House really wants to take a proactive effort to make sure that the building is not just safe for us to do our work, but for the public as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, once COVID is, is once we get out of COVID-19 and the restrictions that we're under, the state house is, is open for, you know, the people to come visit. Mm-hmm. Um, people come in to just tour the building, to learn about it. And then, of course, uh, the people also come to advocate for legislation they care about. So, it's important, I think, that we take every measure to, to be extremely cautious and in, in ensuring that we can, that anyone can go into that building and feel safe. So um, I think that uh, I'm excited to see what the committee, you know, how they're going to conduct this, how they're going to do this work. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, they're still sort of trying to get organized. Um, the other House committee I was assigned to was House Ways and Means, which is really exciting. Um, House Ways and Means Committee is in charge of all budgetary issues. Um, so, you know, we're actually starting that process of, of conducting mm-hmm. hearings um, to, you know, look at, and you're actually a member as well mm-hmm. of the committee. So, you know, we're sort of in that process right now remotely. Um, but, it's um, just a very exciting um, way to, to learn more about the budget process, to be able to take a role in it. And then, you know, the committee also looks at every, almost every bill that we do. So certainly a lot of work, but really excited to, you know, be a part of it. And then I was also assigned to three joint committees. Um, and for those that don't know, joint committees are made up of House members and Senate members. Um, and it's a way in which both chambers can kind of vet legislation and, and work together to try to, you know, iron out any issues of ones that are going to go forward, um, get public input and, you know, really be that first, like taking that first really close look at legislation that's mm-hmm. filed. So I was assigned to the three of them, as I said, Joint Committee on Financial Services, Joint Committee on Election Laws, and Joint Committee on Veteran and Federal Affairs, which um, I think you might be on Veterans and Federal Affairs as well. Nope, not this time. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I must, I saw an email come through yeah. from the committee there. Some of the committees right now are doing what they're like sort of introductory meetings. Um so yeah. we've done a lot, we've done a couple Zoom ones where we get to meet the chairs and the other members and talk about um uh, you know, what, what to mm-hmm. expect. Um, so we had one for the committee on financial services. Um, so chairman, uh, I'm sorry, chair Murphy and chair Creighton, uh, the Senate chair, um, 
were great about sort of giving us an overview of what they look at. And, and one thing that was interesting for me to the point we made earlier regarding public safety is this is going to be very different from the work we did on that committee. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, tackle, tackling a lot of important issues, you know, especially regarding insurance um, mm -hmm. and banking and, and a lot of, you know, really important, uh, looking at a really important financial institutions that I think, especially in light of uh, so much conversations about the economy and, and, and where, how we're going to recover. I think a lot of important stuff is going to come through that area. So I'm excited for yeah. hearings to get started and learn more about it. Um, for election laws, um, you know, that one, I, I don't know much about that committee either. We haven't had our meeting yet, but um, I do believe that, you know, we are already talking about things such as vote by mail. Um, and we already, already passed an extension. We already passed, by, yes, we for, passed for an extension. For our municipalities, for our small towns that have elections coming up. Correct. Yeah, which is definitely needed. And so when we talk about, you know, some of these permanent changes, I'm, I would imagine that we'll get to kind of talk a little bit about making that change permanent. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, just a variety of, there's so much talk about um, the ways in which we conducted our elections this year that I think it's going to be an exciting committee to be mm -hmm. on. And then uh, for veterans and federal affairs, um, in my previous work as legislative director, I were my, my predecessor was a veteran. And so I got to work on a lot of veteran policy issues. And so I'm very excited to mm -hmm. be able to continue that work in the capacity of state rep um, They, you know, they're the house, especially has always been, I think, at least when I was as a staffer, I've always seen how the house has taken a lead on making sure we provide our veterans, um, you know, with, with generous benefits. In fact, we're one of the best states in the mm -hmm. country in terms of how we treat our veterans and how we make sure they're supported. So I think that, you know, I hope we continue doing that. And I'm excited to be a part of, of that process as well. Yeah, so you're absolutely hitting the ground running. What Rep Kilcoin didn't mention is that it is very, very rare for a freshman rep to be appointed to Ways and Means. So so she's setting the record, like really the bar really <laughs> high. Um, and the committee work is, is, is really important, but also incredibly hard to do remotely. So, so mm -hmm. I'm thankful for all of the chairs who are trying to do as much as possible. We're doing it on our committees too, to do these meet and greets, especially for the new reps and some of the reps who came totally. in on a special after most of our hearings had wrapped. There are some reps who have been here for a year, but haven't been to, to a hearing. Um, and something that I didn't realize until I was doing some work with with legislators in other states, I take for granted that in Massachusetts, if your bill is timely filed, so it's filed at the beginning of session before the deadline, you get a public hearing. In other yeah. states, you're not guaranteed a public hearing on your legislation, even if you file it as a legislator. Wow. And so so that was something that that made me really thankful for for the Massachusetts rules to make sure that, you know, every single bill deserves a public hearing and to be yeah. considered. And we're trying to figure out how to do that in ways that I think there will be some silver linings to COVID. Being able to take testimony remotely will mean mm -hmm. constituents who couldn't take the, didn't have the privilege to be able to take the whole day off and go to Boston and wait all day to be able to testify. Might be Definitely. able to to hop on a, a video conferencing uh, meeting and and testify from, from their community. So, yeah. so those are some of the things that I'm hoping are gonna, gonna come up. Um, but with a, just a few minutes left, I'm wondering if there's any legislation, an interesting question for you probably is, is I often get asked, how do you come up with your legislation, right? So you've worked on the staff side and now you're, you're a, a rep. How did you come up with your, your legislation this session? You know, I took the approach of, um, being a freshman legislator there. It's important. What I've seen is at the staff level is, is, um, being able to kind of work with other reps in that capacity, you understand, or at least I understood that there's a lot of uh, veteran legislators that have already have really taken leadership roles on a lot of different policy areas and have, you know, great experience on, on what the history of certain issues are and, and or have experience in doing that work before. So for me, what I wanted to make sure that I was doing was, you know, taking into taking an inventory of, of sort of business I knew needed to be taken care of. Um, there were certain bills I had worked on at the staff level that I was able to, can, to file as the lead sponsor, which I was very grateful for, you know, to be able to take on that role. And then there were some, some other bills that, you know, we, I had worked on before where other legislators that, you know, wanted to take the lead that maybe, you know, I think a couple of veterans bills, um, some other legislators have 
worked in that area, really wanted to have an opportunity to file it. And so I, I really was trying to, you know, recognize that as a freshman, I wanted to be sure that I was filing bills that I knew I needed to file and then take an opportunity to, to you know, as we move forward, which I know this is a little difficult in COVID, but learn from some mm -hmm. of the senior legislators that are there before, because like you said earlier, you know, my, my policy area it, in terms of statewide stuff was, was very narrowed in some ways. So I think this is a really exciting time to, to work with others, to figure out what they are doing. So when I was deciding what I was going to file, um, it, also this was sort of informed a little bit by COVID too, because, um, you know, we had a lot of local bills in my district that, um, needed to get done. So for those that don't know, you know, we have our general legislation that is, you know, encompasses, um, it, it can impact every, every state. And then if, but if a bill only is, is, um, impacting one municipality or one city, that's called, you know, a special legislation, it's a home rule petition. And so we had, um, about, I think nine home rule petitions that we were trying to get through last session. <laughs> that the town had come to us throughout the year. And I think there was a little bit of an influx with this too, where we had, you know, there's a lot of changes to open meeting law to local mm -hmm. government go governance. So we sort of had to pick up a few more. Um, and typically what you'd see is um, once we, with the legislative full formal sessions would add into normal session in July, you'd have about six months where in formal sessions, you could still get a lot of these local pieces done. We didn't have that this year. So, mm -hmm. you know, the legislator, last legislative cycle, you guys were, were like you said, we said earlier, you were literally voting till 4 a.m. on on really, really important bills. Um, so, you know, the workload just was in, insane. And so mm -hmm. I think a result of that, we had about six bills I had to take on that we have to refile to start mm -hmm. again in the process. And, and so... I was really making sure that I was communicating that to both um, the municipalities that they were for, mm -hmm. as well as the, uh, you know, the delic the, the, the little district delegation that we have that includes, um, you know, I share a town with Representative Ferguson, I share a town with Rep Gregoire, and then the Senate delegation is um, Senator Cronin, Senator, um, Senator Chandler, and Senator Eldridge. So that's a lot of different people you mm -hmm. want to make sure everyone's on the same page mm -hmm. for. Um, and so those really, you know, I wanted to make sure that those were all set. And then, um, I was able to then file a few bills that we had left over from last session. And then, um, a few new ones that I was excited to be able to work on, um, that are sort of, you know, nothing too major, but what really tackling some more specific niche issues. Um, I have a few that are dealing with, uh, you know, better access to, to cancer treatments, um, mm -hmm. trying to expedite that. Um, another bill that is, um, you know, this is veterans related, but, um, making sure that if you're a member of the national guard, your family can, can, can access the same sort of benefits as other states can. So mm. trying to bring more equity there. Um, and then I'm trying to think of what else it, it sort of runs the gamut. It's hard to kind of mm -hmm. like kind of put it into different policy buckets, but I'm excited to sort of start that work on, uh, pushing through my own bills. And like we said earlier, this co-sponsorship period has been so great for me because I've been able to talk with a lot of constituents to talk to different organizations mm -hmm. and advocate groups and other legislators um, to, about what they're working on. Um, and, and you were so grateful to myself and some of our new freshman colleagues to, to really take some time out of your busy schedule to, to let us know what you're working on and, and different bills that you've had, um, you know, you've taken the leadership role in and, and helping tell us what, what they're about and what might be interesting to us. So that was really helpful, I know, to myself and to, you know, my other colleagues. And, and I think a really great example of, as a freshman, what's, what's, a, uh, how important it is to, to try to educate yourself on what's out there and who's working on it and what's, what, what the bill does. So that's yeah. kind of, I guess, where we're at three months in when it comes to <laughs> bill filing. You know, only three months into a two-year session. Well, yeah. <laughs> Rep Coolcoin the 12th Worcester is really lucky to have you. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me on my little access TV show and getting Lemons to residents to know some of their neighboring reps. Uh, and hopefully we can do this again soon. Uh, but it is, we're actually filming this on St. Patrick's Day. So yeah. I do know that you have some <laughs> things to get to this afternoon. Um, and so happy St. Patrick's Day and looking yes. forward to, to working with you for the rest of the session. Yes. Happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody watching. I am wearing my green. Um, 
uh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a different same. It's, it's crazy to think this is now the second St. Patrick's day that we've celebrated under COVID, but, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, as, as somebody that, um, is very proud of their Irish heritage, you know, it, as long as you get, I'll get some corned beef and some Irish music and it'll be, it'll be a great day. So awesome. Awesome. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. And we will see you all in our next April episode. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thank you again for having me. Of course.